Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, brothers and sisters, please. This man needs little or no introduction. Every time he speaks, the wisdom, the revelation that proceeds from his mouth. When you meet him, the weight of the glory upon his life, yet he carries with such a humble disposition. House on the rock, Port Harcourt. Port Harcourt City, River State. Please one more time. Tonight, receive the ministry of the inimitable Apostle Joshua. Sermon. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God. Sing, you are God alone. God alone. From before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. You are God alone. You are God Jesus will be glorified in this place. Tonight we declare that you are Lord over this city, over this church, and in this place. Be glorified tonight. Bless your people. Let everyone who has come here tonight and the many who are following online, let none leave the way they came. In the name of of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Pastor Larry, thank you. Such an honor. Please be seated. Amen. The Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. And we have come again to feast on his light, to feast upon his wisdom because it is in his light that we see light hallelujah we began a teaching in the morning 
that I'd like to wrap up before we just head for the ministration. The laws of spiritual power. Please do well to listen to the teachings from yesterday night, very brief session, and then this morning. But I, I began to discuss three laws that control spiritual power in this kingdom. Number one, we looked at the law of spiritual illumination. That it is as far as your eyes can see, your perception, light. Your sight is a product of the light. Like you have eyes, but you need a headlamp in the night. And the headlamp of your car, the brighter it is, the more your vision. Is that true? And that our possibilities in this kingdom depend on the level of spiritual enlightenment that we have. And it was a call for us to pay attention to knowledge, specific knowledge, knowledge that reveals the full counsel of God. It is important for us to explore by the spirit and through knowledge the vast possibilities that are contained in the Christ so that we do not limit him based on our perception. It is true that God can do all things, but we must walk with the Holy Spirit and the word to know how far all things can be so that we can then believe. Is that true? Hallelujah. Number two, we looked at the law of submission. According to James chapter 4 and verse 7, it says to submit yourself before the mighty hand of God and then it says to resist the devil from that standpoint of submission and he assures you that he will flee. Matthew chapter 8 from verse 5, the encounter with Jesus and the centurion, he said, for I am a man under authority and I can say to one, with the consciousness of the authority that I'm under, go and he will go, come and he will come. Do this and he will do that. And so he said, Jesus, you need not come to my house. Speak the word only. Because those who are under authority reign with their words. Speak and your servant will be healed. And one of the synoptic accounts said, Jesus told him, go. And that self same hour, the child was healed. Hallelujah. The last of the three laws, very important. The law of faith. The law of of faith hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 three spiritual laws that control the flow of power in this kingdom the first being the law of spiritual illumination the word of god number two submission the authority of the kingdom that your strength is derived from your submission and may i remind us that the hallmark of submission in this kingdom is when you lose the ability to say no to God. If you still have the privilege and the luxury of negating what you know God desires for you to do, you are not truly submissive because it's proof that you do not trust him. The Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Hallelujah. The way of the Lord always leads to rest. The way of the Lord always brings you to your Sabbath. It may not look like it, but the way of the Lord always leads to rest. Number three, the law of faith. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Paul is speaking and he says, but without faith. Without faith means outside of the realm of faith. It is not possible. There is no possibility to please God. He says, for he that cometh to God must come believing two rules number one that he exists you first have to believe that he's not an idol that he is god and he's alive he is number two that he is the rewarder that means you must have at the back of your mind that your pursuit and your coming to god has value always do you know why because the Bible says, blessed is the man who God causes to approach him. You have to understand that there is a labor dimension to seeking God. So he gives you an information so you do not feel cheated. Seeking God for a long time will make you look like a fool. He says, remember he's a rewarder. Let that understanding give you the staying power while you seek him. 
for many years people will go ahead of you while you seek him for many years he will interrupt so many things in your life but every time the devil wants to use your passion to make you feel that you have missed out in life you are reminded by this truth that he is the rewarder not them that carelessly seek him them that diligently seek him he pays attention to the attitude too are we together faith is very important in this kingdom if you want to receive from god you have to understand the law of faith and there are two dimensions to this law that i would want to discuss as far as the administration of the power of god is concerned i'm not necessarily teaching it as that that doctrine i want to open you up to the law of faith as regards the transmission of god's power now listen there is only one instance recorded in scripture where jesus remember let me make reference to yesterday night and then even this morning remember our standard and our benchmark our definition of spiritual power based on scripture genesis chapter 1 from verse 2 to 4 that for you to be said to have spiritual power the highest level and the highest manifestation of spiritual power recorded in scripture is the capacity to say and to see it happen and that what happens is good don't forget that no matter what you have and you show to be power if you do not have the ability to use words to create realities that are good you have not gotten to that reference so this is what we aim at in this conference that god will bring us to a point where we can say and then it happens and that what happens is good hallelujah so there are two dimensions to this operation and for everyone jesus met who needed healing who needed restoration everything obeyed him except one scenario that i want us to look at now are you ready mark chapter 6. let's look at the scripture now mark chapter 6 we'll begin from verse 1 the bible says and he went out from thence and came into his own country and his disciples follow him next verse the bible says and when the sabbath day was come he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished saying from whence had this man these things and what wisdom is this which is given to him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands three is this not the carpenter's son now you see you see what what is wrong with these people now after appreciating the power and the wisdom now they are contrasting it is this not the carpenter's son the son of Mary, the brother of James. Look at all the descriptions. Number one, the carpenter's son. Two, the son of Mary. Three, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon. Are this not his sisters here with us? And they were what? Did the Bible say they were happy? Please look up. We are studying something here. So Jesus is teaching and it was an astonishing session and you would think these people would be happy and say glory be to the name of the lord this is the son of god the bible says they they saw the mighty works and they acknowledged that this was superior wisdom but it led immediately to offense how do you get offended at the mighty manifestation of the power of god how do you get offended at the supremacy of the word of god dispensed through a man this was a possibility now next verse jesus said unto them a prophet is not without honor that means every true prophet has alongside that office honor are we together he says but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house verse 5 and he could there do no mighty work save that he laid hands on a few sick folk and healed them jesus was surprised the bible says 
first three words and he marveled jesus was surprised what manner of people are you that i come in full of the spirit without measure haven't taught you the word of god he saw cases and situations there that were within the jurisdiction of his anointing and grace but he was surprised the people could not be touched he was surprised that means that he said some things that did not happen there were people jesus told them rise up and they did not rise up and the disciples said this is surprising master we do not know you with failure what is going on here jesus had to defend that failure and he said look let me give you an explanation that failure did not come from me it came from a condition that i want to correct the condition was the refusal to discern who was in their midst and the bible called it unbelief unbelief wow unbelief yes sir if you pay attention to what i'm teaching you many of you will find out why you have been around mighty men you have been around god and never get anything you can clap you can sing and celebrate what god is doing in the life of others and then return back as though you did not meet god these people were in the presence of jesus the word of god the son of the living god and the bible says he marveled at their unbelief now their problem started with number one they are acknowledging the fact that he had the wisdom of god or he was a representation of the wisdom of god they didn't argue that number two they did not argue that there were mighty works that were wrought through him and rather than being happy and giving glory to god the bible says they were offended what was the basis of their offense we know you your brothers were in that meeting too so by what means did you evolve to rise above them and they began to question his humanity they downplayed his divinity they downplayed the fact that he was the son of god notice that all who received from jesus did not associate him to any um his his earthly work as it were they connected him either to his divinity or to prophecy for instance thou son of david have mercy on me there was something about the covenant of david it was the covenant of mercy are we together they when they saw him they acknowledged him they called him in fact the woman who said rabboni they called him all these names but you see the names that they called him here the brother of joseph look at his sisters look at his other brothers look at his relative did you know that of all the people related to jesus the only person who benefited from him in fullness was his mother you read your bible and see that the relatives of jesus never truly benefited from his ministry they hung around and wasted three and a half years and did not get anything but his mother submitted to his teaching until she received the holy ghost too you would think because she was the one who carried the word that was enough basis for pride but she said no 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 i know what the angel told me and even though i played a major role the only woman on earth who had the privilege of carrying the word do you know what it means to carry the word bodily for nine months you should be proud forever snap your womb sell it patent every kind of thing and here is a woman who can look past that and say you are not my son i will not be deceived you are the king of kings my womb only gave you a body i submit to your teachings as usual when jesus was teaching she was not listening as his mother she was listening as a disciple and she qualified right to receive the holy ghost can i tell you this the law of faith demands listen carefully the law of faith demands that both the vessel who would be used by God and the recipient of that grace, both of them have faith roles to play. And I want to define it for you now. If you believe what I am teaching you, some of you, even without the prayer beginning, you would see that certain miracles will begin to happen in your life. On the part of the vessel, here is what you need to believe. Number one, you need to believe 
in Jesus Christ. Just because you are the vessel that he's using, if you do not believe him, then you will never truly be able to walk in the miraculous. You will not be able to command the power of God. You must believe the Bible says that he exists, that he is. Are we together? Number two, you must believe in the fact that by the election of grace, he has chosen you to be a dispenser of his power. Now, please listen to me. If you believe in Jesus as the mighty miracle worker, you believe in him as the son of the living God, and you do not believe in yourself as the privileged vessel he will use, the power of God will not flow. There are two levels of believing. As far as the vessel is concerned, you must believe in Jesus, but you must believe in yourself, not as a human being. You must believe in yourself as the vessel privileged by God to be used to bless his people. There are many people who do not believe God can use them. There are many people who do not believe that they can be vessels. I have met so many people, even preachers, who truly do not believe that the power of God can flow through them. And Satan will cash in on that mediocrity that sometimes we think is humility. Are we together now? Yes. Jesus himself, the epitome of humility, got to a point where he acknowledged he said, before your father Abraham was, I am. It is not pride to acknowledge the fact that the grace of God has found you. Are we together now? And while the devil dangles all the explanations before you, why you think you cannot be used and anointed by God, and why you cannot become a conduit of his power, you rest in the fact that his love and his mercy has found you. This is very important very simple understanding but it is powerful every time i stand to minister before god's people i believe in jesus but i believe in myself not just as a nigerian believing i'm a nigerian does not let the power of god flow i believe that by the election of grace and by the privilege not the making of myself that he has so called me by that privilege and allowed me to be a conduit of his power this i believe i believe it in the morning i believe it in the afternoon i believe it everywhere i am the son of god i believe it that i am an extension of the possibilities of the kingdom i am not just a man of god preaching a sermon no i believe i am an envoy it is not pride what you believe is what flows to the people are we together now you have to believe this whilst you are seated there you have to believe that you are the one god has raised to be an answer to your family you are the one that his power will flow through you know once you say that all kinds of things will come to discourage you you have to move them and say lord i believe i don't know how you will help my own belief but i believe you can use me There are times that I'm invited for meetings and when I get there, I just look at the people and I look at their hunger, thousands of people. And even though these people love Jesus, they are happy when I come because they believe that God sent me. But the question is, do I believe he sent me? Don't let your congregation believe you more than you. Do not allow those who need you believe in your being sent more than you, the vessel. Are we together? Look at the confidence of Elisha. He said, let the king come so that he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. He was not just bragging. Who else was there? That I believe that you have to write the things you believe about yourself under God as touching the dispensing of his power. I believe that his power resides within me. I believe that I am a communicator of divine realities. You must believe this. I believe that situations and circumstances over the lives of people will bow when you come representing his purposes in their midst. This is what I believe. When I stepped into this place with your dear pastor, I didn't just come to sit down hoping you will be blessed. That is a risk. I know you will be blessed. 
believe me <laughs> i know you will be healed i know you will be delivered i know for some of you you are you are you are waving those challenges for one last time i know it it is the truth forgive me if it sounds like pride but i'll be lying if i tell you i do not believe this i do not believe that anyone will meet me once and actually go back the same i don't believe it truly speaking truly speaking if i actually meet you and your life remains the same i will go on a retreat I will have to search if he's backsliding let god help me this is what i believe nobody met jesus twice to be blessed they only met him more than once for the continuity of their lifting the continuity of their understanding it matters man of god listen to me you so we, we come from backgrounds where we live among people who downplay the investment of the spirit in our lives some of them are well-meaning people i'm teaching you something about the law of faith here the average person in africa the average person looking at me now has more people closer to you who do not believe you than those who believe you is that true it is it is a challenge as a continent and even as a nation that it seems like the closer people are to you the more they are aware of your humanity we play together when moses came and stood before his half brother who had now become the pharaoh of egypt you know they were brothers they played while they were small the father had died now Ramesses was pharaoh and he came and met him and said thus saith the lord god he laughed and said my stupid brother who has been at the backside of the mountain for a long time you come and you meet me with the awareness of the wizardry in egypt and you dare to say i should let god's people go moses said i'm not here to negotiate with you let the rod keep doing the speaking and he said i'm ashamed this is what you brought the god who sent you brought a snake from a rod janus and jambers please come and remind this man that he was once in egypt can i tell you this the first thing you really have to overcome is not demons is to overcome the negative voices that are around you who when god begins to call you and they see you praying the day they invite you in one small fellowship to lead prayer where are you coming from from a little prayer meeting you God does not know what to do with vessels again and he's fine and you feel stupid whereas God is showing you that you are going to the nations this is this is listen to me this is very important these guys in Mark chapter 6 look at the sarcasm that they brought before Jesus you would think because he was the son of the living God he was immune to sarcasm that was a sarcastic statement who is this guy you guys call him a miracle worker you call him a wonder walking god you call him this and that that is your business we know him these are his relatives imagine that they see people imagine what they would have felt during the triumphant entry who is on a donkey going to where jesus the son of the living god what did he say he was the ancient of days he said he was in heaven don't mind that liar he's an arrogant young man who has younger brothers and yet they came to for the meeting and sat down and listened to him while other people were crying under the influence of his doctrine other people were watching and saying well okay i think i'm impressed but it still doesn't change anything he's still the same person in every congregation in every city in every family you will find people who god is sending you to but they may never be able to receive you will try and pray for them you will fast over their issue and find out that you are always powerless in their midst the moment you are among them you don't feel divine again because there is something about their sense of familiarity they are so aware of your humanity that it is difficult for that power to flow through you this is what happened to jesus and can i tell you after many years of living in such a negative environment it is possible that you can come to the conclusion that could it really be that these people are right hmm. so god has created a strategy 
and usually not all the time but what god does with people like this is he will take you out of your environment for a very long time and and allow you to have the requisite level of motivation that builds you when he now begins to announce you and it is too late to doubt what you carry he can bring you back now as a savior this is what is happening to some of you because if god keeps you in your family right now number one they may not even allow you serve god to this degree number two they can't understand your passion you may not know how to begin to help that lady please you may not know how to begin to explain it to them this is true many people today who have this clarion call of greatness they have been limited because they are in the midst of people who are used to them we saw you when you were born they say we were there during your naming ceremony but he's calling me to be a prophet what prophet not you maybe a stranger so god allocates strangers to come and bless them while he takes you and builds you in an environment that can respect what he's doing in your life some of you probably came to portaco for nyse and god just trapped you here he said no going back just stay because if you go back you are going to add seven years of pain your environment is not conducive for the kind of anointing I need to put upon your life and you can be roaming around port Court with nothing exactly to do and he says look it is about the environment as harsh as egypt was moses would never be able to grow effectively if he was in any other place the greatest persecution would not have been pharaoh's persecution his own people would have killed him how many pastors continue to bleed because when they are with with their congregations that familiarity lift up your hands and they watch them they say please and then they leave their churches and go somewhere where people can appreciate the investment of god's grace and then they are seeing the gifts of the spirit flow and the man himself is surprised i never knew i could walk in the world of knowledge because there was such a a pungent atmosphere this is what they did are you learning something tonight believe what i'm teaching you because it is truth that jesus the son of the living god the word of god was surprised that he could not do anything he prayed for a few people they could not receive and yet they wanted to receive the law of faith every vessel that will be used by god has the assignment to conquer the limitation of your territory not listen 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 let me balance it here you don't have to go around fighting those who don't believe you that's not your assignment are we together now god did not give you the assignment of fighting those who didn't believe you many people who do not believe you are not evil people it is just the limitation of their perception so let god know how to introduce you to them in power and glory but as for you you must sustain the psychological strength to rise past the negative perceptions you can step into a place and feel the negative energy if you come as a brother or a sister they will receive you if you come as a classmate they will receive you if you come as a civil servant who worked for five years in a bank they will receive you but don't you dare come in the name of the lord so believe in jesus and you must believe in the fact that he has made you a vessel i am grateful to god for helping my mind i don't know what he did to me to have brought me to this place but i will die believing in jesus and i also die believing that he has made me a vessel that these hands are not just for food they are conduits transmitting divine realities in ever increasing measures that everywhere i stand god is this i believe i believe that i actually shake hands with you and say good morning and you go back and your life remains the same no 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 it's a mentality so when you are given a job you begin to rejoice for that company 
they don't know why you are happy for them because something has been introduced into that system your real value is not what you studied the real value is what you represent you represent an ark an altar within that workplace that may not allow certain negative things come and they begin to make profits they begin to rise and they check their books and they see that there's nothing we are doing now that we were not doing before except that they employed one person who became an extension of the presence of god can i tell you before jesus returns i believe that, that there are people who will be part of companies and businesses simply for the spiritual value they bring that people will begin to discern that it's not only intellectual value spiritual value is real value that can be measured that they will invite a man and say you become part of the board members what are you here for absolutely nothing you you secure the presence and the favor of god but thou O oh lord are a shield from me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh lord are a shield from me my glory the lifter up of my head. hallelujah now on the part of the recipient listen carefully on the part of the recipient you also have a twofold approach to faith like the vessel you must believe in jesus you must believe in jesus number two you must believe in the fact that this vessel that god is about to use to bless you is truly a vessel anointed by god to bless you here's how it's put in the bible second chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20 it says believe in the lord your god so shall you be established he says believe in his prophets he did not give a physical name to that man that means when you believe in a man you don't believe in his name you believe in the office you can believe in god and believe in your pastor as your brother or your tribesman you will not prosper that way you have to believe as touching the office are we together now the moment this faith connection happens there is no limit to the flow of genuine spiritual power that when a vessel comes he comes believing in Jesus and then believing in the privilege to be a vessel a vessel of honor a conduit of power then on the part of the recipient you come believing in the same Jesus who the man of God represents and then you believe in him now you see most of these imbalances and this error that we see in the body of Christ they have come as a carnal way of men of God trying to force members to believe that look I'm not ordinary is out of the pain of some of these things we are discussing so ministers have started inventing all kinds of strategies to force the people to believe in them it doesn't have to be that way their motivation may be sincere but the approach is wrong the real key is enlightenment on the part of those who receive even if jesus appeared here physically you will be surprised there are many people who will not receive and the bible is already giving us a a means of correction you believe in Jesus and you believe in his vessel the vessel believes in Jesus and he believes in the fact that I have been called I have been chosen I have been anointed when Jesus came, listen to me, he did not just believe in the Father. The Bible says in, in um, Luke 9 chapter 4 or so, the Bible says he looked for where it was written concerning him. Why did he want to know about himself? When he found it, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He read it himself to them. And here's what he said. This day, what you have read, this is the man who embodies that reality. As a result, Mr. Man with the withered hand, stretch your hands. Immediately the man was healed. Jesus had to come to a point where he acknowledged 
the woman at the well was having a discussion with him and he got to a point where he had to tell her look this man this living water i am that prophet you are expecting i am he can you stand and tell i'm not saying stand up physically but can you stand before situations and circumstances and say that 120 year old prophecy in my family that a savior will arise by the privilege of god's grace i am he i am he can you stand before your family and say i am he blessed is he who comes in the name of our god blessed is he who comes in the name of our god blessed is he who comes in the name of our god when people come to me and say apostle i have a situation and i'm trusting that god will use you i look at them sincerely and because they have believed in jesus and they have believed in me i take responsibility if he's provided that anointing then it becomes wickedness from that point to leave them helpless many of you have come i was we returned from a place with with your dear pastor in the afternoon and i think it was about one or so thereabout i saw several of you standing outside ready to come in and your, your pastor was so touched by that he was communicating it and i looked at it i said my god some of these people did not go home now let me tell you what sarcastic people will say what is there are these not ordinary men why will you punish yourself like that you can know god for yourself you can have an encounter with god it is the foolishness of our generation that continues to make many people recycle their pain again and again it is not human worship it is desperation ask Zacchaeus Zacchaeus climbed that tree and he said look I acknowledge I may not be tall but I'm not stupid I will climb the tree and Jesus said come down I'm going to your house tonight we're going to have a moment of prayer but largely what I'm going to be doing tonight is activations and impartations we're going to pray for the sick but I just sense that in this conference there are many things that are dormant spiritually that need to wake up there are gifts of the spirit there are investments of the spirit hear me that are lying low there are giants who are just lying moving like like grasshoppers and my assignment is to create that spiritual ignition hear me man of god you are greater than what you know hear me there is more to you we are like eagles but life has forced us to live like chickens it's time to realize your identity it's time to flap the wings and leave that level and rise to a new and a greater horizon this tonight is my assignment we will pray for the sick we will minister deliverance to the oppressed but can i tell you more than a healing and a miracle i want you to believe that there is a dimension of power your destiny needs and i want you to insist that this conference will not be over until you take your portion of that power hold on how do you know you have accessed that power genesis chapter 1 2 and 4 that the moment you leave this place you begin to say certain things and you begin to see it happen that you can go to church on sunday man of god and look at your congregation and say i come in the name of the lord i come with the investment of the holy spirit some may laugh as before except that when you speak i tell you i sense a strong angelic presence here please help me who's on the drums someone help me there 
Alada shana teska di baraka dosi atata. Sharaka tebeka tebako dosi. Listen, let me tell you something. Please sit down. You see, this man standing before you by the privilege of God's grace, I want you to understand that every time I stand to minister, sometimes it's really good for people to find out how God helped us to journey with him to this level because sometimes in as much as the emphasis should be on Jesus it is important sometimes for people to understand that that spiritual antecedents it helps you to really appreciate from whence the courage the audacity and the power comes from I have spent my life searching seeking pressing learning growing building searching for something divine and true tired of christianity without power explanations here and there giving all kinds of flimsy excuses i believe in the gospel of power i really believe in the power of the holy spirit not just falling down that an individual can become an effulgence of heaven you can become an extension of a reality that is greater than this realm i believe this i believe that humans after their encounter with the holy spirit and the anointing of the spirit upon their lives that they change they no longer become ordinary i truly believe this In my life, God has brought me to the realm of encounters. I know what encounters are. Angelic encounters, divine encounters. I have received all kinds of impartations, spiritually and physically. I've shared some of my experiences with you. I withheld some of these experiences. Is there anyone who's sitting on the... Please, help him, man. Eh? Just help me with the symbol. You guys have to be spiritual just help them so that they can discern what to do. these things you see all these instruments of worship and these sounds they are not just instruments they are languages the bible says to place him upon the ten stringed instrument it says i will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp hallelujah have encountered graces I have pursued mantles I have honored my way into anointings I am a product of many of them believe me when I tell you this many of them that you can become an extension of the life and the power of heaven you cannot do ministry otherwise ladies and gentlemen except it is not god you desire to represent the weightiness of that glory that shakina must tabernacle upon you that when you move you carry with you a cloud of glory that is feelable and palpable that anyone who sits under the influence of that meeting they may not even know what is happening to them like some of you now why am i shaking why is my body hot why is it cold what is happening to me it's an exposure it's a realm of reality this is what i'm introducing you to tonight the power of god is a reality you cannot be a blessing without the power of God. You cannot lift men without the power of God. You cannot change lives without the power of God. You cannot save sinners without the power of God. You cannot transform destinies without the power of God. Say unto God, it says, how terrible art thou in your ways. It is through the greatness of thy power that thy enemies submit themselves to you. help them please I believe tonight in this place help this woman please
Listen to me. Please hear me. Every spiritual gift in scripture was given for the edification of the saints. Every anointing and every mantle and every grace you see here is for the equipping of believers so that we will become matured and we will become powerful. For everyone that seeketh, find it. Everyone. If you do not find it, is because you are not seeking it with the kind of desperation listen there is there is a there is a reckless desperation when you really desire to see the power and the glory of god upon your life it says oh god you are my god early will i seek you my soul longs for you in a dry and a thirsty land to see your power and to see your glory hear me Prophets in Port Harcourt, it's time to arise to be prophets indeed. Apostles in Port Harcourt, it's time to arise to be apostles indeed. Pastors, teachers, kingdom financiers, it's time to arise. Like Gideon, I'm blowing that shofar. Where are the 32,000 that need to arise even at this time? Because the king's business requires haste. Listen to me. We're about to pray. Do you know every time you reject an opportunity to contend for the power of God, someone's destiny that you are sent to pay that price. For every day you refuse to manifest, someone is dying. Someone is crying. Someone is losing. Someone is being defeated. Hallelujah. such glory in this place that lady come I'm seeing an angel pouring oil on you help her in the name of Jesus Christ may that grace come on you there is an activation of a grace from within your spirit let that fire burn until you become a vessel of honor and power and glory. Hallelujah. My head, you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn. And I am anointed with fresh oil. My head, you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I am anointed with fresh oil. Don't wait for a prayer point. Cry out your heart to your maker tonight. Lord, I'm tired of this level spiritually. Tired of this level of anointing. Tired of this level of grace. Is someone crying? Everyone that seeketh find it. Go ahead and pray and cry. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, I was. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. 
Emmanuel, all the world is calling your name. Emmanuel, when you come again. Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face. Emmanuel, when you come again Emmanuel when you come again Emmanuel don't be tired it's called an activate conference Emmanuel I enter the Holy of Holies I enter through the blood of the Lamb I enter to worship you only I enter to honor I For your name is holy You are holy Holy are you, Lord. So we bow as we enter the throne room and we cast ourselves down at your feet. Oh, for you are holy. Thou art holy, there is none like thee. In your presence, that is where I speak. The Dabakato Shalada Brandega de Katoska de Brahesli. Shanine Paskatila Hashkada Brandege de Baruse Ziatarus. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm upon my holy mountain. Hello, Madonna. Madonna Hello Kim Madonna Hello Kim Madonna Listen to me I sense in my spirit that there are people who once walked in certain dimensions but for whatsoever reason it looks like you no longer see that grace working in your life you used to walk in the prophetic you used to have dreams before it will happen what is happening right now is there is a grace for restoration of spiritual gift i'm stretching my hands now in the name of jesus it's coming like the dew of hammer take that grace now Take a capaco toshka pebata, crete catina caparaca toshia, the brandes catina capa. That fire is coming upon you. Let there be a restoration. Prophetic dreams that was giving direction to destinies. May that grace come back again in the name of Jesus Christ. Healing mantles that used to walk in your life, and now it looks like for whatever reason. By the mercy of God, let it be restored now. Hallelujah. Those ministers are here. I just saw something like a ring. 
and I just saw fire. There are three of you, a strong anointing, just where these ministers are. I don't know you, but I stretch my hands right now. Please bring them out. In the name of Jesus, three of you, that fire from heaven is coming. It's an ignition upon your life. Please bring them out. I want to speak to them and pray. Let's do it very fast. Help them out. That's one of them there. Those outside, make sure you are following. Make sure your heart is open. Is this man a pastor? My friend, are you a pastor? Come. It's a new season for you in Jesus' name. You will step into new dimensions of grace in Jesus' name. Take that fire right now. You will never, ever be the same. Help him, please. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are in ministry. Watch your association. Watch your association. That's what God is saying, I should tell you. Watch your association. In the name of Jesus, that power is coming upon you. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus, a new season. That lady wearing yellow, I'm seeing oil coming on her head. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a woman here. You are an intercessor. That's what God called you into. Please, where is that woman? I want to pray for you. We have to be very fast. Help her, help her, help her. My God. Just bring her gently. Is that... Who knows her? She, she's into the ministry of intercession. Because there is something that is coming upon you. And the Lord is shifting you to another season. I stretch my hands right now. Help them, please. Look, the wonder-walking power of the Spirit. Mama, you are an intercessor. From, from where? Please help, help this. I'm looking at you. Um, is the mic working? I'm looking at this woman. Mama, God bless you. Where? Can she hear me? Okay. Okay. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing the face of Baba Adeboye. On your face I'm from Redeem, sir. you are from Redeem. you are from redeem yes, can I pray for you ma you can imagine a woman like this you see the kind of people that we that I was telling you you will see a woman like this and you will be surprised at the kind of grace for intercession that she carries in the name of Jesus I pray for you may the Lord honor you May that grace multiply right now. Right now. Take that fire. Help her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is someone here. God has called you purely into evangelism. You are an evangelist. Like a, a proper standard evangelist. Like Reinhard Bonke. But you have not seen the signs and the wonders. When I begin to mention your case, the power of God comes on you. This is how, you see, the supernatural is a very, very interesting dimension of God. Please don't just come out at random. We are people of order. Let's not make this place rowdy. We are doing it very fast. Why is this woman here? You are an intercessor? Come. I'm not saying if you like intercession. Intercession is a ministry. Let me pray for you, madam. Look at me. In the name of Jesus, may that grace right now rest upon you. Take that grace now. You will never be the same. In the name of Jesus. Bring this man for me. God is going to use this gentleman. I don't know him, but he will do wonders 
for the kingdom. Look at me. What do you do? You are a pastor. Where? I, I want you to take out time and stay with God. Don't be distracted because the hand of God is mighty upon your life. I stretch my hands. The power of the Holy Spirit in a new dimension, let it rest upon your life. Take that grace right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will never, never be the same. Andrew, who is Andrew? I'm hearing a name, Andrew. Andrew, your name is Andrew. Is there someone like that? We have to be very, very fast. Andrew. Andrew, do we have someone with such a name? Andrew. When you find that person, please very quickly, let me talk to the person and then we'll pray. Now hear me. Over the last three months, the Lord has been speaking to me about the restoration of the healing mantle. Do you know most people, especially in our generation, we, except for a few people, we've not really seen what the Bible calls the ministry or the gift of healing. People heal here and there, but you ask all the elderly people, they will tell you that during their days, they really saw people who walked in the healing anointing. Today, you may see pockets of healings here and there, but there is a restoration of that grace. And everywhere I've traveled, as God has granted me grace, I have prayed by the privilege of the apostolic that God will find people in that place. I don't pray carelessly. I pray with understanding. I want you right now, the people I'm going to pray for, please bring them out because there is going to be a mighty, there are a few people God wants to consecrate and separate to the healing ministry, not just healing desire. Some of you don't look like it, but you'll be surprised. Father, I don't know where they are, from my left to my right, inside and outside. Everyone, oh God, that you have preordained, especially at a time like this, in the name of Jesus, may that grace, let it look for you now. Let it find you. Help this woman. Take that grace right now. Take that grace right now. Mantles of healing. In the name of Jesus. Mantles of healing. Bring them out. Take that grace right now. Many women will step into this end time ministry. Hear what I'm telling you. Many women will step into this ministry of prophetic healing. Healing by the power of God. Right now I declare, may that grace come upon you. Right now. Show us the ancient path. Help them. Would you lead us along the eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to God is still releasing healing. Healing, healing, healing. There's one person, is this the worship team? I just saw light coming this direction. There is one of you, that, that grace, that grace for many years, God has been looking for you. That anointing is coming on one of you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me, for some of you, God is speaking to you. The season has come. Stop fighting this call upon your life. You have fought it for years. God will leave you and come again. He will leave you and come again. Now is the time to say yes. May that grace come upon you not now. Every fear, every fear that is causing you to not release your all. I crush it right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. If your pastor did not answer the call, many of the people who stand blessed today would not be blessed. It is a noble call indeed. Is it Augustina? Augustina or Augusti, Augustina? I think that should be a woman. Is there someone with that name? Augustina. I want to pray for you. My God. The Lord is shifting people. Augustina, please, when you find such person, Parani Katisha Lakusia Dabada. The ministry of signs and wonders. The ministry of signs and wonders. 
signs and wonders are beyond miracles the ministry of signs and wonders madam this woman looking at me what do you do huh? are you in ministry your own ministry because can I talk to you come your life is about to change You are in ministry in this city. No. I want yes, to pray sir. for you. Madam, look at me. You believe in Jesus? No. Yes, sir. I want you to dedicate yourself after this conference for a period of prayer and fasting because there is something God is doing in your life. There is a dimension of grace that God is bringing you into. But right now I declare, you will start having very strange prophetic and angelic encounters. I declare, take that grace now. Take that fire by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hear me. I don't mean to insult you, but listen to me. It is not everything I see that I will say. There are some of you, after this conference, you need to go back and prune certain relationships and work on certain things in your life. Now, you see, the truth about it is, I'm not a herbalist, I'm a man of God. But you see, the wisdom of ministry is not everything that you see. You don't come and embarrass people. But I am telling you, as this fire is coming on people, for, for, for several people, the fire will call you to a deeper level of work with God. There are certain relationships and certain practices that you must edit out of your ministry. That is the honest truth. So that some of this, this prayer does not just become an endorsement for the continuation of error or an endorsement for the continuation of certain limitations while we do not condemn there is a call for reordering and if god beckons on you with that call don't be ashamed there is nothing to be ashamed about it is seeing the things of god more perfectly for some of us the limitation is the issues of money you love jesus with all your heart but your approach to money as far as ministry is concerned need some divine editing don't be embarrassed there is nothing to be embarrassed about the goal is to mature and perfect the church we have to be careful so that while the anointing of the spirit comes upon us we do not misinterpret it to mean an endorsement to certain extra biblical practices you don't have to be in error you must insist that, that the purity of your delivery as far as ministry is concerned is within the boundary of scripture are we together now so we are praying madam may God honor you in the name of Jesus Christ this man you are in ministry I wonder why God is visiting people very strongly in ministry in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord show you mercy help her in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit receive the mercy of God in Jesus name now hear me it's time to pray against the forces that sit on the destinies of men do not forbear with evil every time you forbear with evil it multiplies every time you forbear with evil it multiplies I want to pray for you right now for those in front here I declare and declare supernatural impartations that this anointing that has come upon you you will put it to good use for the glory of the name of Jesus and everything that represents the attribute of the flesh let it be cut away right now in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah praise the name of the Lord if they can once they are fine they can return to their seats so that they clear the space for others now hear me the Bible says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the sons of Jacob will possess their possessions. We believe and we teach the whole counsel of God including his desire to see his people free from every demonical influence that will not allow them serve God acceptably. And it is based on this that I want to pray. Please listen to me. There are all kinds of oppressions and oppressions are at, at different levels. When the devil oppresses you, it does not negate the fact that you are a Christian. 
This is why he gave gifts. Paul was buffeted again and again. Are we together now? David was a man who had an evil spirit come, I mean Saul, an evil spirit come to torment him. Now I want to pray because there are people whose lives and destinies have been trapped. To rise up, they cannot rise up. To go forward, they cannot go forward. There are families that have been marking time. You know you are oppressed when the only thing growing in your life is your age. If the only thing growing is your age, nothing else growing. It's an oppression. I want to pray for you now. Hallelujah. God is giving me a very interesting instruction. Please hold on guys. Hallelujah. You see, when you are ministering, one of the things that we must learn is that you must discern the voice of God. Even while we minister, he's Lord over what we are doing. Hallelujah. In a very strange way, the Lord is asking me that we should just be silent and there are people who are oppressed. I'll ask them to resume. But right now, while we are standing here, the Lord, I'm going to speak Genesis 1, 2 to 4. And the moment I begin to pray, if for any reason there is someone under the sound of my voice who either personally or whose family has been under the influence of strange and wicked spirits, the moment I begin to pray, that fire from heaven will bring not only visitation but a separation. <laughs> now I want to pray. Listen to me. Here is the instruction God is giving me. There are two people who are going to shout loud under the anointing to the hearing of everybody. Now I can pray. I want you to bring them out. Father, I decree and declare everyone who is under the influence of any spirit other than the Christ, right now I decree and declare from the front to the back, from the left to the right, Makata Skatete Bakata. This is your season of liberty. Help them. Just help them so they don't injure themselves. Whether you are an usher or not, just help them and guide them forward. I really apologize, Pastor, having to bring people. Quickly, please bring them forward. Right now, I declare, at the count of three, the Lord is going to begin to minister deliverance and those yokes will start breaking. Please help them whether you are an usher or not. One, two, three, I decree and declare, be free now. Be free now. Be free now. The power of God is setting you free. Please bring them out, my goodness. Help them. Yokes of darkness. Yokes of delay. All kinds of ordinances of darkness. Tying down destinies. In the name of Jesus, be free. 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 Bring them out. Enough is enough by the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm seeing people's feet tied so that they don't move forward. But fire is coming right now. Everything that has tied your advancement. I decree and declare, let that chain be broken now. Let that chain be broken now. Go forward in the name of Jesus. Go forward in the name of Jesus. Go forward in the name of Jesus. There are some of you, even though you are in November, before the end of this year, everything God said he would give you, from January till November, within one month, I'm speaking it prophetically, it comes into your life. There are ministries here, you have experienced stagnation in different levels. You are sincere, you love the Lord, but it looks like an attack just came over your ministry. An attempt to frustrate the work. Right now I stand by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic. Every embargo sitting on any work here. 
that should glorify Jesus. I declare that embargo lifted now. I'm seeing the number 25 and I'm seeing veils covering the eyes of the faces of those people. You see, when the favor of God is upon you, in the realm of the spirit, it shines your face as said from scripture. Everything that covers your face is hindering favor from your life and based on the integrity of scripture. I don't know where they are, but if there is anybody here. You once walked in a realm of favor, but now everybody forgets you. Every good person who can be there to be used by God to help you. You are connected to people who can be used by God. And yet you don't find them at times of help. I decree and declare, in the name of Jesus, may that veil be torn into pieces. Hear me. One of the graces that is upon this house, house on the rock especially, is the grace for influence. And there are many of you who are connected to this house, and yet that grace has not spoken over your life. I want to lend my voice with your pastor to release that grace afresh. You should not be doing something and you are hidden. It is called a house on a rock. Not a house inside a hole. No. No. Everything that has failed to find visibility in your life. Please believe it. Whether it is your ministry, your work with God, your business. I decree and declare that by reason of this conference. And in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God. I declare right now find visibility. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let me pray for the sick. Please lay your hands right now. All those who are in front, I declare that every spirit that has oppressed you and would not let you go, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I speak as one sent. In the name of Jesus, let them go now. At the count of three, release their destinies never to return. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Out of their destinies. Out of their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Release their destinies right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Release them now. Release them now. Please lay your hands. I want to pray for the sick. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch. Is flowing, Jesus. I Madam, this woman, lay your hands on your stomach. I'm seeing the power of God touch you. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands right now. Let the life of Jesus be ministered to your body right now. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God. Be healed completely in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. I have been a victim of oppression in the area of sickness. I know what it means to receive a miracle. You see, let me tell you why the healing ministry is very important. According to the law of territory, if you do not sustain a healthy body, you are not authorized to function in this realm. Are we together now? So, you need, there is a requisite level of health that allows your spirit to coexist with your body. If your body is deteriorated beyond a certain threshold, the spirit will have to leave. Are we together now? So, every manifestation of sickness is an administration of death in process. This is why the healing ministry is powerful. It's not just about showing that a man of God is powerful. No. He sent them two by two. And he gave them a commission. He said, as you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cast out devils. Raise the dead. Freely you have received. He says, freely give. 
lay your hands now believe Jesus all those tumors all those growths don't forget about it you just focus on Jesus I want to pray you are the house that is on a city the rock that cannot be hidden let me pray for this man Andrew what do you do sir public servant I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray by the power that raised Christ from the dead that everything that represents what's the issue why is he crying please find out just someone politely find out from him your father has cancer just, just take, it's okay it's okay just take it easy just take it easy you don't have to cry you're welcome that's why you came here we're going to pray he's crying because his father is a pastor and he has cancer very touching isn't it let me define compassion for you one of the principles of the flow of the anointing God will grant us another time to be able to teach on it is that you must sustain compassion compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity you have to be touched that is why many times in your training process you will often taste the things you would set people free from so that it emotionally connects you to that anointing that every time you see people in that pain you remember you, you can draw from the archives pain is a gift not all pains are demonic you cannot serve God acceptably until there is historically it may not necessarily be God causing it but he's a master at using everything around your life to become a tool to build you do not throw away your pain your pain is a gift that will become a gateway for the anointing to flow in your life there is a level of innocence that does not allow the anointing flow when you have gone through pain you will know what it means to administer to those in pain if everyone's face were covered in heaven you will still know who Jesus is because he's the only one that carries the nails you would think because he's seated at the right hand everything should heal it remains there as a testament that he is savior the one who died for our sins not even in heaven at the hands everyone who has genuinely had an encounter with Jesus they will tell you you will know he's Jesus not just because the name is written on him but you will see that sacrifice remains a memorial forever i want to pray andrew god bless you what do you do sir i'm working as a consultant to a company about to be the refinery a fine a refinery do you believe if i pray for you god can lift you you believe that there is a prophetic dimension to anything it does not it does not create it is not a license for laziness now this is the balance because many people in the body of Christ sometimes may not be diligent. They are just waiting for the prophetic to do everything. The prophetic comes and at, as an advantage. It is activated at the instance of diligence. Are we together now? Diligence is the platform that makes the prophetic efficient. So I want to pray for you. Please hold my hand. Stand up. Father, you have anointed us to bless. I release this grace upon this gentleman walk wonders to him right now by the power that raised christ from the dead in the name of jesus christ please come sir in the name of jesus i pray for you may the lord help you and show you mercy in jesus name i pray now please lay your hands let me pray for the sick like this my dear brother who is crying over his father you can stand in for him my friend don't worry don't feel stupid for crying I know that it's coming from a sincere heart. Many of you have lost loved ones and you know the pain. Let me tell you this, sometimes when you see people like this, I thank God for this ministry because it's a ministry that is excellent and yet flexible enough to be able to attend to needs like this. Like him, believe God for a miracle. Shall we pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, here at House on the Rock, Port Harcourt, Activate Conference 2021, I decree and declare right now that the healing power of Jesus, now please listen, here's what I want you to do. I want to pray for you. We'll do this in about a minute or two. And some of you, even whilst you came forward, miracles were already happening. I sense a very strong anointing. You don't have to bring anyone under the anointing, just help them. When I pray for you, I want you to believe and shout a resounding amen. And then immediately, I want you to check yourself. I want us to shame the devil in this house. Check yourself the moment you find out that a miracle has happened to you, whether you are inside or outside, even following online. Here's what I want you to do very quickly. I want you to make your way when I ask you to, to come to either of the aisles here or here. And even if it's just two or three testimonies we take to confirm the things that God is doing in the midst of his people. Is that all right? Now believe Jesus for a miracle. And all of you who are watching from your homes, you're watching anywhere and everywhere. I want you to release your faith from every nation, from Europe to US africa here in nigeria believe jesus for a miracle right now in the name of jesus christ i rebuke the spirit that is back of every infirmity here represented and in the name that is above all names i decree and declare right now from the crown of your head my god such an anointing is flowing to the soles of your feet be healed now healed now I administer the power of God to your body I command every growth dissolve now every swelling go down now every tumor disappear now migraine headaches be healed in Jesus name ulcers of all sorts be healed in Jesus name every blood condition i decree and declare be healed in jesus name hiv be healed in jesus name cancer be healed in jesus name any and all bone conditions be healed in jesus name if you are here on crutches you're here on a wheelchair i declare be healed in jesus name every blind eye whether partially or completely blind be opened in the name of jesus every deaf ear be opened in the name of jesus pain lower abdominal pain the power of god is healing you right now in the name of jesus there's something called tonsillitis there's someone you've been suffering this it comes and goes it comes and goes very inconveniencing right now as i'm praying for you the power of god is touching you in the name of jesus christ pile painful pile i decree and declare be healed now there's someone you have this inconveniencing pain under your foot just under very painful when you stand sometimes you have to break and check yourself i decree and declare be healed right now in jesus name 
it started for you like muzzle pull what we call what we know to be muzzle pull you know that that strain on on your 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 your, your lap area here but now it's, it seems it's degenerated to something very, very painful and serious. Affecting your walk. But in the name of Jesus, I declare right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Now, whether I mention your case or not. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. Here at Activate Conference 2021. I bring you the life and the healing power of Jesus. And for those of you who are standing in for your loved ones, like this my brother here, I decree and declare wherever they are, across this nation and around the globe, may the angel of God's presence go with the healing power of Jesus to them. In the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be cleansed in Jesus' name. Now hear me very quickly in the next one or two minutes we're out of time I want you to check yourself the moment you find out that a miracle has happened to you I want you very quickly we'll just take the first few people who can make it for some of you even whilst you fell under the anointing a miracle happened to you people are coming are you celebrating them as they come check yourself whether you are inside or outside the moment you find out that a miracle has happened please make your way to the front right now very quickly let every other name fade away keep coming let every other name until there's only you let every other name jesus take your place Come on, celebrate miracles. Let every other name fade away. Let every other name fade away. Until there's only you. Jesus, take your place. Are you ready? Let's have a few of the testimonies. Yes, please. Very quickly. No, no, no. Hold on. Just stand. If someone can reach them with a mic there, okay. Just Let's just have one mic so that a pastor or anybody can stand with them. So, very quickly. Yes, sir. Yeah. Heal of three weeks. Rip pain. Rip pain. Yeah. For how long, sir? For three weeks. Check yourself now. Check yourself. Any pain? Completely gone. In the name of Jesus, he will never return to you again. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Very quickly. Are you ready? Okay. Yes, go ahead. Straight to the point. Apostle, uh, um, before now I've been listening. Don't give them the mic, just hold it for them. Okay. Before now I've been listening to a lot of your messages online. I, what I, happened to you right now? Right now, okay. The healing um, ministry is activated. Okay, that, that okay, they call the, on me. I see. The In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Right now, because you believe, I stretch my hands and I seal that call by the power of the Holy Spirit. Carry that anointing and work wonders to bring glory to the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Yes, please, very quickly. Next person. Hallelujah. Amen. So I've been having pains at my right hand side. Since I was in primary school, I wow. was having these pains. And there was a time my husband took me to the doctor for operation. They said they don't see anything. So yes, the I pain is there. Praying, yes. Okay. So as we were praying, yes. I don't lay on there. I called my daughter. There was my daughter that invited me here. Yes. That I should come. So as I put my hand there, I just tell my daughter, I don't see pains again. No. Completely gone. Look at this. Walk and see if there is any pain. Check yourself. Any pain. Are you celebrating miracles? This is a mother right from primary school. In the name of Jesus, he will never return to you again. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Very quickly. Full pie. Come again. Painful pie. Fain, painful, painful pile. Painful pile. For how long, my dear? 2019. From 2019. And right now, you don't feel pain again. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare it will never return to you again. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Apostle, I usually have a pain here. It grows right here in my 
close to my private. And why do a growth. Yes, yes. Are you are you seeing what God is doing? You see? And it, it just yes. Gets, and it, I always have a big pain. It usually comes. And right me. now, it's gone. It's gone. In Jesus' name, it never returns to you Amen. again. Yes, please. Go ahead. I have this pain that I've been here for years. It comes. I've gone to a hospital. The doctor, they couldn't diagnose what it is. And right I now, I exercised my faith, but I was in the service. The pain came. But as we are ministering, I can't feel it again. It's Completely. Gone. Check yourself. Completely gone. It will never return to you again in Jesus' name. Yes, please, very quickly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I've been having hot and cold sensation for three years now. And you mentioned my case. You did not only mention that. You also mentioned muzzle pull and pain under the feet. Instantly, as you mentioned it, everything is happening. Completely. Check yourself. Any pain. Completely. It's gone. Yes, sir. Celebrate with her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Good evening. Let's have just two or three more people and then I'll just do a general prayer and speak over you. Yes, okay. please. I have this pain in my eye because I do read at night and it's so bad that I can't even look at um, the screen. My eyes will be paining me. But now I can look at the screen. You can look at the screen. Yes. Look at the screen. Any pain? No pain. No God. Come on, Port Harcourt. Is this how you celebrate miracles? Yes, please. I've been having a toothache for the past three weeks and it's very painful at this side of my jaw and right now, variable, now I'm free. completely gone yeah. it will never return again in the name of jesus yes please i usually have pains on my joints and since yesterday i've been feeling pains on my joints and on my shoulders so when we are in ministry i pray to god that i will not go home and take pain relief or injections and i will be fine and now i feel free completely yeah. May that freedom remain forever in Jesus' name. Yes, please. I had a serious um, difficulty in swallowing. It's been on for months and pain in my leg. I couldn't walk comfortably. Completely. Everything. It's gone. In Jesus' name, it will never return to you. Yes, please. Hallelujah. This morning, I woke up and gradually a pain started building in all my joints. But while you started praying, Apostle, I could no longer feel it. It was like when it was like the pot was on my head and it was washing wow. down. All, all it will never return to you again. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Apostle, I have been having pains like almost a week now in my chest. I've just been enduring it. Even before I came to service this night, I won't thought of not coming. But while you were praying, I could not feel any pain anymore. In the name of Jesus, I can't feel any pain again. In the name of Jesus Christ, to the glory of the name of the Lord, He will never return to you again. Amen. Yes, please go ahead. For two years now, I've been having chest pain, severe chest pain. Mm. But as we were praying, something started moving on my chest. Ooh. Completely. If I can know it. In the name of God Jesus, God. yes, please. God bless you. Yes, go ahead. Praise the Lord. I um, a nail pierced through my leg last two weeks, and since then I noticed that my leg was swollen. Though I didn't take any medication, but right in this service, everything disappeared. I'm set free. You can walk. Look at me, my dear. In the name of Jesus, any pain, any pain there, I declare it will never return to you again. Yes. I was the one you spoke about. I had the muscle pull a certain time last year. I had the muscle pull and. My left thigh, I started playing the pain at my joint here, the left thigh. They graduated and, and, and centered the second, my right thigh, and no. said, feel the pain. But now, as we are praying, the pain was. In the name of Jesus, they will never return. Yes, please. So I've had this um, pain at my lower back that gives me so much strain while standing, sitting, or walking. But while the prayer went on, I can't feel any pain anymore. Completely. And it's gone. Okay. Yes, please. God bless you. Good evening, Apostle. Yes. Usually, uh, this bingy says sensation in my right ear is with your right ears. Yes, okay. With itching. When you ask us to put our hands there, I laid my hands and can't feel it again. Hallelujah. Now, praise God. Um, for for sake of time, sadly, we may not be able to take all of the testimonies. But I like you to be upstanding while I just pray for these people, and then I'll speak over your life. What happened to you? Come. Since you made that bold declaration. No, don't give her the mic. Let me hear. What's your name and your testimony? Go My ahead. name is Onye. For like two years, I've been having lower abdominal pain. It's gone. Yes. Um, my neck for like one and a half years, I've been having this pain. It's gone. Then I used to heal. I used to pray for people when I was much younger. And they get healed. Not some, not instantly. Some instantly. But I didn't take it seriously. But today I think it's back. 
Don't think. I know it's you bad. came for a conference in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, it will return to you in full measure. And I pray that you will use it to serve the purposes of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. the son of the living God we open that door now number three any man anointed and ordained in this season to hold your hands as a destiny helper and guide you whether spiritually whether financially and otherwise in the name that is above all names I activate their ministry over your life now number four I want to prophesy everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you Everything that has left your life that should not have left, I stand by the voice of prophecy. I call it back to your life. I call it back to your destiny. Relationships, opportunities, 
open doors dimensions in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for your prayer life whatever is threatening your relationship with God whatever is threatening your appetite for spiritual things your passion for prayer your passion for the study of the word your passion for the house of God I declare that limitation get out of your life now fresh passion for the things of God fresh passion for prayer fresh passion for the study of the word fresh passion for the house of God in the name of Jesus and let me speak over your life that when men say that there is a casting down as from tonight for you let it be declared that it is a lifting up in the name of Jesus Christ and finally I pray for you because you have believed in the Lord and you have believed in this vessel because you have believed in Jesus and you have also believed in the grace upon your pastor hear me every dimension of power you came here trusting God for power against darkness power to rise above the vicissitudes of life I decree and declare let the impartation of that power from heaven rest upon your life now rest upon your destiny now rest upon your ministry now rest upon your endeavors now rest upon your business now rest upon your children now in the name of Jesus Christ finally everything that has refused to grow in your life because we were taught that one major characteristic of living things is that they grow whatever is alive should grow whatever has stopped growing in your life in the name of Jesus I command and I prophesy be it your finances be it your spiritual life I declare grow now grow now in the mighty and even the marvelous name of Jesus Christ Pastor Larry always an honor thank you so so much may the Lord bless you thank you house on the rock thank you Port Harcourt in Jesus name